Hello there viewers, welcome to another episode and another new season of the World Rotterdam Domination, the Super League Series. Of course, with this new season, we've had four successful promotions in four years. We now find ourselves in the second division of the Super League. It's going very well, viewers. So far, so good. We find ourselves in the FIFA Coca-Cola Premiership. It's called the Premiership, but it's still the second division. Hey, we're going to go with it. Anyway, it's transfer time. Have we splashed the cash have we lost Armini? Did we get rid of him? Did we bring him in? Did we get a new goalkeeper? All of these questions are going to be answered right now. So today we have a game against Celtic. And as you can see by the little thing over here, we've had a very successful start to the season, which we will get to in a second. But first, let's introduce you to the few new names that we have in the side. Now, I can tell you, all of these players going out, a total of 21 million. The biggest one that went out was Nafu Albanis and Jordan Carrillo. We've kept Armini. We've kept him. A bid came in for a lot of money and he rejected it. He rejected the contract from West Ham. He were actually in the same division as us uh, and he decided not to leave. So with that, I offered him a new contract. He accepted it. So he signed a new five-year deal for which starts at the end of the season. So six years really if you continue this one. And I'm okay with it. I'm actually okay with it. We still signed the player that was going to replace him anyway because we had about 14 million in the transfer budget. So we still brought him in anyway. Shall we introduce you to him? This is the guy. And you might recognize him because we actually played against him uh, against Porto at the end of last season in an episode not so long ago. So uh, I brought him in. He's 21 years old. He is English. He doesn't... I thought he was Nigerian when I signed him. He is Nigerian, it's another nationality, so that's fine. Uh, he is English slash Nigerian, Jamilu Aliyu. I'm going to get that wrong, aren't I? But he has fantastic physicals, he still has a way to go potential-wise, which hopefully we can get his marking and his heading up to the nice green of 15. Uh, but other attributes, I think he's really solid. Uh, he's six foot one. We're going to use him as like a rotation with Armini and Leo Leos. We're going to use them all as a rotation. Uh, he's very Jerry-like. I think, very Jerry-like, and he's African as well, uh, African heritage, but he has the, the really strong physical attributes, not as good on the technicals, uh, and but with good tackling. That was Jerry, in a nutshell, to be honest. So I think we've replaced him really well. We spent 40 million on the man, 42 million in total. He hasn't played any in the league, but he's played some in the Champions Cup, uh, and he did quite well in those two games. Now, we also managed to sign Juan Miranda on a free transfer. Good little bit of business, I think. Brought him in just on 24k wages. Uh, we also loaned out Simon Backer. Uh, we look at all these loan deals, viewers, that we're getting money for as well. So that's gonna be fantastic. Simon Backer, can we find? I can't remember what club he actually went to in the end, or maybe he's still deciding. There he is. He's gone to Marseille on loan, uh, and I think this is a good decision of letting him go out on loan. We got one Miranda, and we got Mikalenko. One Miranda is not as good as Simon Backer, but Simon Backer needs first team football. Marseille are giving him that at a good standard of football. So I'm happy to let that happen. I'm happy for him to go out, pay his dues in another club, uh, and when he comes back, then we can look at the situation with him and Mikalenko. Who's better? Who is going to benefit us going forward? Probably sell one Miranda for a bit of profit because he's worth 15.75 million viewers and he's, he's only played one game. So for a free transfer, I think that's a good decision. Uh, Rami Ramadan was a free transfer, a goalkeeper who I thought actually looked quite good. I mean, yeah, all right, he's 18. He, he's not like good at command of area or communication is really lacking. Concentration is a bit shit. But, you know, he has good potential and some of the technical attributes aren't too bad. I just like him because he's from Sudan and I've never seen a Sudanese player. Is that how you say Is it Sudanese? I think it's Sudanese. Uh, but he is... We signed him up, free transfer. Hey, if all things... It, it, we're paying in low wages as well. I think it's worth it. Now, we have signed two other players. This is the player that we signed who was from Mali, if you remember rightly. Halfway through the season, uh, he has finally turned 18 now, so he has finally come to us. He is going to be training as a striker. I think he's better as a striker. We did speak about this in a previous episode, uh, how he just, he just suits more as a striker, but... He doesn't look as good as what he did when he came in because he had the five-star potential. But we know the uh, the star rating is a bit broken sometimes. But uh, I think overall, as long as he increases uh, his value slightly, maybe he will never play a game for us in the first team. But 
at the end of the day, he might make us some money. But this man, we signed this man here, 13.25 million, Yasin Erkel. And I'm excited about I'm excited about this 16-year-old Turkish player. Some really good mental attributes already. 16 determination, 17 teamwork and work rate, uh, strength for four, but hopefully that'll get better. He plays in the cam role as an enganch, which we, we, we don't use, but still we can play him in, in different roles. He can also play in centre midfield. Once he starts fully developing, of course, he's only at an 88 current ability now. Once he starts developing more, uh, we can decide where he is best fitting and where his attributes are going to help. But we did splash the cash a bit on him. Uh, granted, 13.25 million, but there isn't a lot around right now that wants to come to me for a va for a reasonable price because of the money being thrown around uh, in the high divisions. Any player who has good potential is either rejecting us and going to uh, a club in the Super League. I mean, might be better now that we're in the second division, or they're going for an extortionate money. Uh, we're talking like 40, 50 million that people want for 16 year olds. And I, I just can't bring myself around to paying it. So when I scouted this guy and it said roughly about 15 million, I thought, yeah, yeah, all right. So 13.25 million, because I like to pay all of the money up front so you're not stung with it later on. We do have some money left. I mean, we've got £50 million in the overall balance and 21 in the transfer budget, but the transfer window is now closed. Again, I didn't really want to splash it just in case. I think our side is good enough. We've let a few players go out on loan, um, and you can see here a lot of the players who have played first-team football, the likes of these three midfielders here, but they're all getting first-team football viewers, and that's what the most important thing is, especially this guy. Leipzig rate this guy as an important player, 18 years old, and he's going to be playing in the World Super League. So he's going to be playing in the step above because Leipzig won the division we are now in last season. So I was happy to let him go, uh, and, he, and they're paying a lot as well, 100, pound, 100 grand a month. Happy to let him go. Eric Riera going out as well. Ferry Sturrus, we loaned him out again. Uh, Diamonde, Nicholas Fischer getting another loan deal. Graham Ash, all of these players need the game time, and I'm happy to let them out uh, to give it to them. Andrea Papetti's actually turned out to be quite surprisingly a good player uh, after a few seasons out on loan. May look to use him next year. I don't really know. But anyway, shall we take a look at the side we are playing for today's game? Looks rather similar to the, the team that we have been playing recently. Before we do that, though, Luke, we need to look at something else. Schedule-wise, how have we been getting on? We've had a very good start to the season, viewers. We've only dropped... Well, actually, that was a friendly, so don't even count it. In the league, we have won all four of our games so far, conceding just two goals against Dortmund and Brighton. Some really good performances in those games as well. Leicester... Dominating performance, we only scored two goals, Cesaro and Lesjak. Uh, Kyle George and Sandro Tonali getting a late winner against Dortmund. Massive result against Dortmund, that, away from home. In the Champions Cup, we have a tough group, which we'll look at now. Burnley, we beat them 3-0. We have AC Milan, Wolves and Benfica with Burnley. So we've got some tricky games coming up. We've got Benfica next, and I think the next game we'll bring in a in an episode, we'll do a double header that will be uh, near to the end of Christmas, and we'll do a, sort of like a, a, a double episode or a double game episode, uh, whereas today's only going to be the one because of the transfers, uh, and that will be like a Champions League game and a league game. So we'll look at that. Athletic Bilbao, we beat them 4-0, and they still have the Basque rule in play, so they are struggling, I think, in this league now. They have dropped, well, no, they are, they stayed in this league, but I think they'll struggle this season. I won't be surprised if they go down, because they did not look like a threat at all. Kyle George with two penalties, Locatelli got a goal, and Lazaro in the 93rd minute. Uh, Ricardo Santarelli, who, to be honest, has been outstanding for us when we've played him. Beat, uh, we beat Brighton 2-1. He got on the goal uh, on the goal scoring sheet with Mikalenko as well. Two goals in the first half. They came back with one. Uh, flattered them, really, because we battered them. Celtic in this game here, though, we have made one little tactical change. Mazala on attack. Now, if you watch the player spotlights, which you probably do because we have way more views on the player spotlights than we do on this series, um, we highlighted Astor Ranks last weekend and we've seen the difference between how he performed in a Mazala on attack and how he performed on a deep line playmaker. And it was quite surprising how much uh, the difference was. And Locatelli, 
in the last few games has easily been our best player and as you can see is one of our highest average rating players uh, and when Santarelli comes into the role he's also been really good he has two goals this season so we're playing that we're playing this Mazzala on attack role Lazaro's out injured uh, we have like people like Antonio Governo now back from uh, loan from last season this is what he looks like I'm sure Antonio would want to see how he is developing he had a very good season last season well I say good 12 games didn't play that much to be honest in the in the second half of the season he scored four goals two assists good average rating though with one player of the match he comes back Louis montanu has gone out on loan so we're changing things around there we have this man up from the uh, the reserve team who I really like the look of. We signed him from Middlesbrough, if you remember rightly, last season, £15 million. We've played him a couple of times already, uh, coming off the bench, and he's been good. He's been very good, and I'm happy with his performances so far. Uh, we also have the bench of uh, Carl is there. Sardella, let's bring him into the team instead of instead of Kelvin. He was, they've both been playing really well, and Aliu is on the bench too. Lazaro out injured, who would normally be in this role. Right, viewers, let's get on with the game. So Celtic then, they have quite a good side. They've got a few of their players that they've managed to keep hold of. They also managed to obtain Palacios. Um, that's a good signing for them. Nino Tavares is a very good right back. Vlasic is a good uh, a good uh, cam as well. So they've got some decent players. They've managed to keep themselves high in the leagues, in this league system. So they are not to be taken for granted, despite what you're thinking of Scottish football is. Leo Leos heads it over very early on in the second minute. But we are top. 13 points. Well, 12 points with this being the 13th. Mikalenko now. Starting the attack again. On the left-hand side, Locatelli. Loves the 73 number. Squad numbers are back for some reason in the league below. We didn't choose the squad numbers. We now chose them again. So I've gone with as standard as I possibly could other than Locatelli, who wanted number 73. And I wasn't going to argue with him. I like him. Oh, and Renier. Renier has 22 instead of 7. And the reason why is because when the squad numbers were picked, Renier wanted to leave and we had accepted a bid of 50 million for him. And then he rejected the contract offer and complained that he wanted a new contract. And I tried offer him out. He complained that he was being forced out of the club. So I didn't argue with it. I just offered him a new deal and just kept him. I thought, I looked around, there was one player, Renier has scored! He scored. People were putting in the comments about his performances recently, um, and I kind of agree. Although he did have a successful season last season, goals-wise and stats-wise, I don't know whether performance-wise we can say he did. A lot of the games he went quiet. The games he did score, and he can to get to... That's phenomenal athleticism, by the way, to get his foot around. Fair enough. Um, but, yeah, we kept hold of him. There was one player, Diego Nascimento. Uh, you might have heard of him who is a Portuguese player, who is transfer listed for 20 million, who can play the camera really well. Not as good attribute-wise as Renier. We accepted a bid for him, and then we had to decline it uh, when Renier decided he wanted to stay. So that's fine. I was happy in the end. I wasn't too bothered by it, as long as he can perform. But that is the reason why he is number 22, because I anticipated that he was going to leave, uh, and I wanted to give our new player number 7. Didn't happen though. Never mind. Hans Salin, the newly crowned number eight. Sardella plays in. Locatelli. He's had two or three opportunities already in that Mazzala on attack role. I'm telling you, viewers, you'll see a lot of goals from Santarelli and from Locatelli in that Mazzala on attack role. Another opportunity again. Long throw in. Locatelli heads it on. Les Jack with a bad miss. This is very bizarre. I can't see why they keep doing this now. It's bad miss after bad miss. I just hope it doesn't cost us. We've had nine opportunities, only one on target with cl two clear cut. Celtic, just one shot so far. They've had the better possession, but it looks like we're playing better. Hans Salin, have a pop if you like. He has whiskers away from the post. Unlucky from Hans Salin, who's developing really nicely. I'm happy with him. In the season preview, we're actually tipped to win the league yet again, so no pressure. And so far... So good. Whether we will actually finally win a league title. Did we win the league title before? I can't remember. We actually did, viewers. I think we did. Um, a couple of seasons ago. So that's another trophy to our name, I guess. But it would be nice to win this one. Get ourselves into the World Super League. Five years. In five years. Five successful seasons. That would be great. Renier again. He's popped it in, viewers. He's popped it in. 
He is changing our opinion very quickly. Two goals assisted by Domen Lesjak, who has been great. And still up for grabs. There's a lot of people on Patreon. You can name Domen Lesjak after yourself. You're at the $15 tier. You can name a regen after yourself. I will also go through. I didn't have time this weekend. But I will also go through Patreon people uh, who have signed up on the $6 tier and start renaming our youth intakes after yourselves. Um, we don't have a lot of youth intakes because our scouts just keep getting rid of them. Oh my god, Kyle George. What a phenomenal shot that is. What a goal. The Brazilians are taking over, viewers. The Brazilians are taking over. Kyle George, that is a phenomenal shot. And he's run from his own half. Just pa Domen Lesjak has just done so well there to block the, the defender from coming past. And we are taking on Celtic. Full barrels here. It's 3-0. At half time. Great performance. Love that. So far, giving us five wins out of five. Because I very much doubt Celtic are going to come back. Very much doubt. I'm going to praise the boys. We have a couple of people we can bring on very early now. And we can start looking at these players. Yasin Erko being one of them. Seth Warmer, another one. Maybe we can't bring them both on because they play in the same position. That's a good effort. And it's cannoned off the post. The, the first big chance for Celtic. Missed. Right, 60th minute. This is where we can change some players. So I'd like to bring on Seth Warmer. Uh, let's bring him on in the box-to-box -box midfielder role. I'm happy to, to sort of do that. Santorelli in the Mazala on attack. Miranda, maybe for Mikolenko, who is struggling slightly. Um, or we go Antonio Governo up top for Les Jack. Let's do that. We've got Antonio Governo back. Let's see if we can get him a goal on his return to the side after his long time at Moscow. So Renier there on his hat-trick now. Tenali plays it over Sardella. Get it across if you can. Antonio's there and Antonio scores straight off the bench. Tactical genius. He's been on the pitch two minutes, probably his first touch. First goal of the season. Killian Sardella with the assist. A header at the back post from the young Scotchman. Lovely stuff there. Sardella does very well. Cuts inside. And he will be happy with that. Against Celtic, he will be happy with that. As a Kilmarnock fan, good for you. Another chance. Sandro Tonali whipping in the free kick. And Kyle George has scored. It's five viewers. It's five. The Brazilians. He's on five goals already this season. We are looking like a force at the top of the league. Lovely ball at the back post there. Kyle George, he scores with his feet. He scores with his head. It's a very good finisher. We've had some big bids in for Sandro Tonali and for Kyle George. Talking huge bids that I've had to reject because I don't want to lose either of those players. Uh, Man United came in for Sandro Tonali for £75 million. And that is dreadful. Callum McGregor has just robbed us of a goal because Kleber has let that one in. Some people were questioning Kleber and keeping him in the side. He's a young goalkeeper who I think will be... Really good going forward. We don't. There's not a lot of options. Although, Donald Rummer is available at a very cheap price. But he just doesn't... I don't know what it is. It doesn't look like he's progressed. It doesn't look like he's very good. We are going to win this game 5-1. Fantastic performance other than that last goal. I am happy. Tell the boys. Performance was excellent. Assistant manager, you are correct. Lovely stuff from the lads there. Uh, so far, so good. 15 points. Five wins out of five. A good goal difference. I'm happy. Are you happy? I'm happy. But anyway, that will leave this episode for a close. Thank you very much for watching. Please drop a like on the video if you can. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. I did actually check the analytics. Surprisingly, there is still 20% of people who watch this, this series on a daily basis... Because I looked back for about five episodes who haven't subscribed yet. And I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why you keep watching the episodes and you haven't subscribed yet. But if you are one of those people, please consider pressing that subscribe button. We've got two weeks now before we get to the goal of 5k subscribers. I want to get to 5k before that uh, 28th of July deadline, my birthday. I'd like to get there as a birthday treat from you guys to me. Press that subscribe button and get me to 5K. That would be fantastic. Um, and I think, I think we can do it. 
So last but not least, thank you very much for the Patreon members. Uh, let me know if you are one of those people who have the, the, the rights to name one of the regens on our series. Uh, let me know if there's a player like Les Jack that you would like to rename. Of course, it is only regens only, like Antonio and like Hans Salen have done. Uh, they've managed to get in there early, and they've got two players who are now uh, in the first team. So Santarelli's available as well, a player who I'm playing quite often. Leo Leos at centre-back, all available if you wish to rename them after yourself on the $15 tier or above. And, of course, if you haven't subscribed to the Patreon yet, take a look on there. There is a tier down there at $2. If you if, if you know if you want to contribute but you don't have uh, the option financially to do so, a $2 tier is there if you wish to do that. Uh, and I would, of course, appreciate you just as much as I do at the people who... who who contribute uh, just uh, even more. But I just I just like the fact that you guys are enjoying the series still. It's getting the nice little amount of views. It's not getting the, the views like it does a player spotlight, but I understand why. And the, the, the fact that it doesn't get that many views doesn't take away the fact that I'm enjoying doing this save. And I'm not going to stop this save until we win the World Super League. And you have my word on that because I just really like playing this save. I'm really enjoying it and I'm glad you guys too. Anyway... I'll see you in a couple of days for another one. There's a player spotlight tomorrow. Don't miss it. 250 like target and we'll start doing defenders to next week. Enjoy it. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye. Well, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, there's another one below that I have picked for you to have a look at. Also, if you'd like to sponsor me as a content creator by pledging to my Patreon page, you can do just that by following the link below and be like one of these wonderful people. Thank you.